Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to Should You Buy. Today we're going to be talking about Splinter Cell Blacklist. This game originally released on the previous consoles back in 2013, and over the past week I bought the game and played it on PC to see how well it holds up in 2020 and if it's still worth the money. Splinter Cell has always been a very popular series in the stealth genre and Blacklist wastes no time throwing you into the action. The story starts off very intense and action packed after the bombing of a United States military base. Sam Fisher is called back into action by the president to stop the terrorist organization known as the Engineers. By Blacklist, we have already seen a lot of Sam Fisher and his character remains strong and great in Blacklist. He's tough, smart, and a total badass. It's like if you took John Wick and Agent 47 and blended them into one, you have Sam Fisher. What I really love about his character is how stubborn he can be. When he has a gut instinct about something, he goes with it and doesn't let anybody change his mind and we see several times in the story where he makes some extremely risky and questionable calls that completely pay off. Obviously, no matter how good Sam Fisher is though, he needs a strong supporting cast and luckily he has exactly that in Splinter Cell Blacklist. You got Grimm who serves as Overwatch and has a very strong gut instincts and beliefs just like Sam. You then have Charlie who is the really smart computer hacker who kind of serves as the game's comic relief. I thought his character was great and well acted. And then we have Briggs who is the young yet talented field operative who often joins Sam on his mission. A great supporting cast and great likable protagonist is the bread and butter to every great story and it really worked well for Splinter Cell Blacklist. The bad guys in this game, the engineers, are led by the main antagonist Majid Sadiq. Now I have a mixed feelings about Sadiq because truthfully he's not in the game that much and what little we do see of him is pretty basic and generic as far as villains go. One thing that I do like about Sadiq however is that he feels very powerful and it always feels as if you're like 10 steps behind this guy throughout the whole story. Story. And it's basically Sadiq versus Sam as they try to outsmart and outthink each other. Overall, the story is pretty good and engaging, but gameplay is on a whole nother level. Before playing this game, I thought I knew what made a good stealth game, and while my opinions have definitely changed after playing this game, and this game is going to make it quite hard to look highly of stealth in Assassin's Creed and Ghost Recon ever again. The stealth in Splinter Cell Blacklist is absolutely phenomenal. I love the option to choose to play non-lethally or lethally in which you can switch between hand-to-hand -hand combat or knife combat or choose to use a taser or a silenced pistol. The freedom to play the game how you want is great and it suits all play styles people prefer. If you want to be John Wick, you can do that. If you want to dodge and evade enemies and go the full game without killing a single enemy, you can do that too. Or if you just want to be a secret deadly spy ninja like me, you can do that as well. There's also a large variety of gadgets and weapons to fit each play style that you can equip and use in different scenarios like sleeping gas, or proximity mines. The gadget variety is arguably some of the best in any stealth game ever. The parkour in this game, although basic, I found to be also very fun and very cool. Climbing up buildings to sneak in through a window or climbing upside down from a pipe and jumping onto an unexpected enemy was really cool. It makes you feel like you're playing through a spy movie. The climbing is very fast and although unrealistic, I still find it a great thing to have. The stealth takedowns also look really cool and once again, they are a bit unrealistic, but they look so cool that it didn't bother me at all. Like, in real life, you probably can't knock a guy out with one quick karate chop to the neck, but it just looks so awesome. Now, my favorite part about the stealth in Splinter Cell Blacklist, and what made me doubt every great stealth game I've ever played, was the interactivity with your environment. You can interact with the environment in pretty much any way you could in real life. You can shoot lights to make rooms darker and make it harder for enemies to see you. You can cause distractions with things like alarms. You can shoot power boxes to disable power in the building. You can also climb up shafts or crawl through vents to avoid enemies and remain in stealth. You can climb in a building through windows or just through a side entrance through the door. There are just so many different ways you can approach stealth and malleate it that it always feels like you are in control. Now since stealth is so great, I hardly ever wanted to do an open combat. And you are never really forced to do it, which is great because I found the combat to be a lot more boring and basic compared to the stealth and the game just basically becomes your ordinary third person cover based shooter. The AI in this game also aren't great. I do like how they can notice things like open doors and windows, they are often really stupid and for some reason never call for reinforcements when they see a dead body. One slight issue I also had was with the audio. The footstep audio in this game is pretty bad. I could have someone right in front of me and it would sound like they were walking directly behind me. Or when you hear the AI talk to each other, it sounded like they were a mile away, which can be a little immersion breaking. It's not that big of a deal and not enough to detract too much from your experience though. The customization, however, in this game is pretty solid. You can change and upgrade your suit 
as you progress through the game and earn money, and although there is no largely noticeable difference in gameplay or aesthetic, it is nice to be able to create a build and increase your stats as you progress. The weapons are pretty basic, you get access to a silenced pistol, taser, and a primary weapon of your choice, and you can buy new pistols, they don't have much of a difference other than the mag size really, but it is still a nice addition to have, and I never really cared to ever use my primary weapon because, well, this is Splinter Cell, and Splinter Cell isn't Splinter Cell without the good old fashioned silenced pistol. It would have been cool to have cosmetic skins for this game, don't get me wrong, I love the classic look, it just would have been nice to change things up every now and again, and the only real aesthetic change you can make in this game is the color of your lights. Now, in terms of mission structure, Splinter Cell Blacklist has a pretty outdated mission structure. It has the linear mission selections and all that, which was very popular back around 2013, and although it is outdated, it personally doesn't bother me too much, and it is a nice change of pace from the open world genre that we get so much these days. You also have a mission hub in which you can customize and select which missions you would like to do, which makes getting in and out of story missions very easy and allows for easy replayability, which is great because there are definitely some missions that will make you want to come back later and replay. The missions themselves all take place in different and fascinating locations, from the sewers of Chicago to an embassy in Iran, the locations are very diverse and each offer cool sights and new environments to interact with. You never feel like you are playing in the same environments over and over again, and that is something I really appreciated about this game. Now something I'm sure you would all like to know when considering purchasing a nearly 7 year old game is how the graphics and performance are. Well, I can't really speak for your console players out there, but I can tell you that on PC, this game looks pretty good. I was very impressed at how well the graphics held up, and for a previous generation game, it is not bad in the slightest. For you PC players out there, the movement and feel of the game transfers nicely onto keyboard and mouse, and the performance was also very solid. On an RTX 2070 Super and i5-9600K, I was running about 130 to 150 FPS consistently, and I experienced only a few crashes and no game-breaking bugs or glitches. And one pretty big downside is that the manufactured cutscenes are downscaled to 720p and 30 FPS thanks to previous generation hardware, and I had the same issue with other games from previous gen so far, so for a 7 year old game, it holds up very well in terms of performance. Also one more quick thing to add is that this game does in fact have multiplayer and co-op, and surprisingly in the few multiplayer matches I did play, I found games very quickly, and I didn't really find the multiplayer that enjoyable, as I didn't really like how it was basically just a first person shooter, but nonetheless, multiplayer is so awesome to have in a game like Splinter Cell, and the game modes are fun concepts. So if you're into multiplayer, especially in these kinds of games, then that may be something you want to check out. So, Splinter Cell Blacklist has a compelling story with a great protagonist, strong supporting cast, fantastic stealth gameplay, and diverse locations. While it has some slight issues with audio, oddly acting AI, and some poor cutscenes, Splinter Cell Blacklist receives my overall score of a 9 out of 10 and I absolutely would recommend picking up this game and giving it a try in 2020. If you're into series like Assassin's Creed or Ghost Recon, or just a stealth genre in general, then this is your kind of game. Not to mention, the game is about 7 years old, so you are going to be able to purchase it for an absolute steal of a price. I think I got the game for around 7 bucks, so yeah, definitely worth it at that price. And that wraps up my thoughts on Splinter Cell Blacklist, and now I want to hear yours down in the comments. Do you like the stealth? Is Sam Fisher a good protagonist? I want to hear what you guys have to say. If you enjoyed the video, a like would be very much appreciated, along with the subscribe to the channel. If you want to play Splinter Cell Blacklist, or discuss the game with me and others, feel free to join my Discord, link is in the description. Thank you for watching and have a fantastic rest of your day assassins.